next. Okay, perfect. All right, so welcome. Welcome to the like working out your niggle, finding the clarity you crave masterclass. If you're here with me today, whether you're in the room with me or whether you are catching up on this um, afterwards, there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're feeling like this could be something that's relevant for you. It could be that you're feeling a bit lost. It could be that you're feeling a bit stuck. It could be that you're just like, mm, I feel a bit blah, I'm not sure why. You'd be amazed at how many people come to coaching with me and feel exactly the same. So first things first, this is so normal. If you're having one of those moments feeling a bit like, oh, not sure, not sure where I am, not sure what's going on. You know, you might think on paper, I should be okay. You know, my life is full. I've got everything I, I wanted or hoped for, but something feels a bit off. It might be that you feel like you've lost yourself a little bit. So, you know, you're not sure who you are anymore or what your hobbies are or what makes you happy or where your passions are in life. You might just be feeling a little bit stuck. So today, what I'm going to introduce you to is a tool to help you to work out what that niggle is. Because until we work out what the niggle is, we can't then work out what we want to do about it. And often for a lot of people, they come to me and they're just like, I just feel a bit stuck and I don't know why. And then we get into this tool and all of a sudden it's like, ah, that's what I want to work on. That's the things that I want to change. That's the stuff that's bothering me the most. So that's the plan, <clears throat> excuse me, for today's conversation. Before I get started, though, just to introduce myself. So I'm Jo Jackson. I'm an executive coach accredited with the EMCC to senior practitioner level. I've been sat in your shoes, though. So um, a couple of years ago, I did a complete life overhaul. So prior to that, I was married. I um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was a customer director, a digital director at world's, one of the world's biggest FMCG organizations. And I had that moment of something doesn't feel right. Okay, and I sort of sat there, felt a bit uncomfortable, felt a bit like I'd lost my mojo, started to feel quite anxious, started to feel quite stuck um, and just realised that I wasn't being true to myself. But I couldn't work out why, because like I mentioned a moment ago on paper, I had everything I've ever dreamed of. Um, and so I made a massive life change. I had a coach of my own and then I made some big life changes. My husband left at the beginning of lockdown. And then from there, I kind of said to myself, well, the only way is up, really. So I literally ripped up the, the life plan and changed everything. So retrained and um, and now here I am. So executive coach working with mainly women in the space of life and leadership coaching, helping people who feel a bit stuck to find fulfillment and passion in their lives again. In terms of me, like behind the scenes, if you like, I'm partial to a delicate Provence rosé. I'm an absolute sun worshipper. My friends and family are everything to me. And I'm a very proud auntie to a little poppet called Phoebe, who's literally the best thing ever. Um, I am very passionate about people. So I absolutely love people. I love how we work. I love getting into our mindsets and, and all those sorts of things. So for me, this is a dream country to be able to put my passion and purpose together. So I've been the line manager, I've been the senior leader in a big organisation, I've delivered results, I've defined strategies and all those sorts of things. But underneath it all, I've also felt stuck, lost, a bit unsure and lost my way. So to help sort of bring my story to life, hopefully we'll reassure you about how you might be facing some things in your world as well. Oh, looks like Leslie's dropped off. OK, so. As you sit here now and you're thinking, OK, I come to this because I feel like something's wrong. I've got a bit of a niggle of some sort. The first thing we need to work out is where is that niggle? So when I introduce you to this, the first thing we're going to do is work out where are you now? OK, what we can do is working using this tool, we can work out where we are now to help us to work out where we want to be. So first things first. This is the Wheel of Life diagnostic tool that I'm going to be talking you through in today's conversation. This Wheel of Life Diagnostic Tool is, it's a real, it's an awesome tool. It's quite simple in its context, uh, co context, yeah, but it's a, it's a really powerful little tool. And um, it was introduced by Paul Mayer in 1960. His logic was that to make our lives feel fulfilled and whole, these eight different elements of our lives need to be in balance with each other. Okay. So the eight different elements that he captured here was career, finances, family and friends, love and romance, fun and leisure, personal learning, health and well-being, and physical environment. So just let me break some of those down for you. So career, I think finances, family and friends, relatively obvious. Love and romance, we're talking about the our romantic sides of our lives. 
fun and leisure that could be anything from travel and trips to hobbies it could be big stuff but it could also be small stuff so it really depends on how you define the concept of fun and leisure it's how you spend your free time how where you are spending your time when you are um you know relaxed rested personal learning this is all about feeling as though we are progressing in our lives feeling as though we're learning something now that could be a new skill but it could also be about learning about ourselves. So the breadth around personal learning, again, really depends on who you are and what, what that means, what that means to you. Health and well-being, I think, is relatively obvious. Physical environment, this is very much about where we where we base ourselves. It's our home environment. It's the environment that we live in, but it's also the environment we work in. Um, and potentially also the the way that we how we share that environment with other people. Okay, so think about physical environment in in that piece. So the eight elements of the wheel of life, and if we can find some balance and, and, um, and some clarity in all of these, that will help us to feel happier, more fulfilled, more settled in our worlds. So how do we work out where we are on this, on this wheel of life? So what you'll notice is that the wheel has got um, uh, lines within it that go from one to 10. Okay, so one at the center, 10 at the top. One means we're very unsatisfied with that element of our lives. 10 means we're very satisfied with that element of our lives. So what we're going to do is we're going to score each um, each of those eight segments with a number between one and 10 about how satisfied we are with, um, with that part of our lives. Now, my counsel to you is be really um, like, what's the word? Just be honest. Try not to overthink it. Just go instinctively with a number. Also, this is there is no right score here. So one thing we can always try and do is try and, you know, well, we'll put that as a 10 because, you know, it's pretty good. Actually, what we need to do is really, really think, you know, deep down, truly, how happy are we with each of these different elements? So this is all about understanding where our level of satisfaction is with each of these elements within our lives. So we start putting some dots on this diagram. So, for example, here, I'm starting to build this, as you can see. Okay. This is just an example. I'm going to do one with you later on, just so we can uh, see where I'm at as well. So what you do is you score your level of satisfaction in each of those areas of your life. And then what you need to do is build it into connecting the dots to create your wheel of life. So when you create your wheel of life, <clears throat> what you'll start to notice is that it, it sort of draws to attention where the areas are that you're most satisfied with, but also clearly where those areas are that you're least satisfied with. It will also start to um, make you kind of open your mind to where some of the connectivity is between the elements on the wheel of life. So, for example, you might have a really high score on physical environment, but you've got a low score on career. Now, why is that? Is that because you're dissatisfied with your career, but actually it's paying you pretty well? And so it's, it's giving you a lovely home to live in. So you start to think about the connectivity between all the different elements on this wheel. And you'll notice things as we do this exercise later on um, that kind of crop up for you that makes sense for you. So connecting the dots, what we can then start to see is, is where is our wheel? Now, what you'll notice is that this wheel is not a wheel. OK, nobody's wheel is circular. Nobody's wheel is perfectly circular. And if yours isn't either, that's totally to be expected. That's actually helpful because it gives us some things that we can think about and start to work on. OK. But the power in this tool, so that's that's creating the tool, that's creating our wheel of life. Really, the power in this tool starts to come through when we're thinking about why we've chosen the scores that we have. So the power in the tool, the magic, if you like, in the tool is thinking about the reflection that it can help us to stimulate. So what, what I'll help you do in a moment is think about what is happening in your life that means you've scored the areas as you have scored them. And I'll be asking you some questions to think about things like, what do you notice about your wheel? You know, how how wheel like is it or how spiky is it? What's what surprised you? What are the areas that you think are quite expected? Which are the areas you want to change or which are the areas you're actually quite reassured by? And what we'll start to think about is how can you start unpicking your wheel of life to understand what your priorities are moving forwards? What are the bits that you want to try and solve? Once we've done that, we then work through and go into thinking about the changes that you might choose to make. OK, so based on your reflections about your wheel, we then think about, OK, how does it make you feel? How does it make you behave? What changes and choices might you choose to make? And to do that, we then start exploring those themes in a bit more detail. 
This is when, if you like a journal, if you like writing down your thoughts, a journal is a really good opportunity for you to capture your thoughts and support your reflection. If you're thinking, you may you may choose to speak to someone that you trust. It might be someone uh, with like a friend or a peer, a confidant, a partner, something like that. Or you might want to work with someone like me who's completely impartial to think, to try and explore your thoughts and take it, take the conversation further. What you can then do is start thinking about how you can then define your goals. So if those things are things that you want to change, how might you choose to change them? When might you choose to change them? What are the, um, the implications of making those choices? How could you make those choices? How do you need to be resourced to make those changes and choices as you go forwards? That's, that's when you're setting those goals, then you can move, you can start thinking about the positive outcome. You can start moving yourself forwards rather than feeling stuck in the niggle, as we call it. You then can create a plan and then obviously deliver the plan in a way that is really, um, you know, holding yourself to account. So being really realistic about your plan, but at the same time, stretching, helping you to get to a really good place um, in, in, uh, in moving towards your goals. OK, so. It's now time for us to have a go with this tool. All right. So for those of you who are catching up on this, I'm now going to take the team here through a guided coaching conversation. So I'm going to stop record for now. But if anyone wants to catch up with me afterwards and have a conversation about their wheel of life, please feel free to do so. OK, so ladies, have you all got 